Welcome to Bloomberg Law on Demand. I'm Lee Pacquia. In a recent speech, Kansas City Federal Reserve President Thomas Honig said that the greatest risk to the United States economy are the too big to fail financial institutions. Joining me now to discuss the federal government's response to this problem, we have Harvey Miller, partner at the law firm Wild Gottschall and Mangies and veteran of so many large bankruptcy cases. Harvey, great to see you. Thanks Good for coming in. So last we spoke, the so-called orderly liquidation authority in uh, Dodd-Frank Title II um, was defined but not quite fleshed out. Um, there were a lot of problems in, in, in the legislation. Creditors' rights weren't quite addressed. Um, the FDIC was given an enormous amount of control over the process. We've had some changes uh, come out in recent days. What do you make of what the FDIC has now proposed? Well, I, I think what the FDIC is trying to do is to publish rules which will show how Dodd-Frank would be administered. I don't believe that it changes the original in conclusions about Dodd-Frank and too big to fail. The too big to fail problem has not been resolved. Dodd-Frank, in my opinion, will not be effective in stopping too big to fail. Now, one of the things that jumps out at me when I, I took a look at the proposals, they put forth a uh, list of how creditors would have to line up in order to get paid from a large financial institution that made its way into the system. What did you think about that list? I mean, did they get it right? Uh, it's pretty close to right. Uh, they basically are following the priority hierarchy in the bankruptcy code. Of course, they're putting the, the government first. The government always gets paid first. Uh, and they put in some provisions about recapturing compensation for senior officers who might be responsible for the debacle. But generally, I think it's pretty, pretty much on target. Mm -hmm. Another thing that people are talking about in Dodd-Frank, the, the, the so-called notion of uh, living wills. Financial institutions are going to have to draw up basically instructions uh, or, or, or wind down plans uh, in the event that they encounter uh, financial turbulence. What's to be made of that? Is this a wise idea? It's not a wild idea, but the question is, will it be effective? Uh, many people don't understand the volatility of a financial institution. If you take Lehman, during the day in Lehman, uh, there were thousands upon thousands of transactions, billions of dollars moving at a great velocity. Uh, the living will, which is a concept of putting assets in particular pockets, is not a, a financial institution is not a manufacturing organization right. where you can say this factory does this and this factory does that. I think Im implementing living wills will be difficult and the volatility of the industry itself will work against the living will because when the event occurs, will they have the ability to effectuate what's supposed to happen under the living will? It's a difficult concept. We've already seen some people raising the issue as to whether those living wills should be confidential or not. Oh, Interesting gonna, point. That's going to be a very big issue. Um, another idea that came out, clawbacks, uh, holding uh, financial uh, companies, executives, and important yes. individuals uh, financially responsible for uh, this, well, the failures of these firms. How would that work? Very difficult because there aren't criteria by which you can tell whether a senior officer is responsible for the debacle. Mm -hmm. so, so it's up to the FDIC. Uh, and the FDIC, there's no mechanism as to how that is going to occur. It's not a court proceeding. Mm -hmm. It's going to occur within the FDIC, which is one of the basic defects, I think, with the OLA. OLA. Should, should this whole process be in the courts? I mean, it, it kind of brings up the issue. I mean, should it be in the, in, in the FDIC's hands or should it be in some aspect of the American court Well, system. unfortunately, the die is cast on that. It's going to be in the FDIC. I've never understood why the determination was made that the FDIC was better than the bankruptcy court. It's different to take over a bank and move deposits over a weekend than deal with a financial institution of, of the quality or character of a Lehman Brothers. The FDIC has never had experience with that. Mm -hmm. So as, as you said, the die is cast, and, and we have the law that, uh, that was passed. Exactly. What's the Harvey Miller prescription for fixing this? It, it's going to need an awful lot of work. It doesn't deal with the uh, too-big-to-fail issue. The basic premise of Dodd-Frank is oversight, mm -hmm. oversight and regulation. Looking backwards, which is sometimes not a good thing to do, Looking backwards, what happened in Lehman and most of the reports that you read is the will to regulate wasn't there. Now, Alan Greenspan, just a week ago, I think, wrote an op-ed article in the Financial Times 
in which he said we should not have these regulations because the regulators won't understand the regulations and therefore they won't be able to regulate. Bonnie Frank responded the other day and said that Alan Greenspan doesn't know what he's talking about. So it's going to be a big problem. No, well, we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, thoughts on the timing. We have, uh, I think, 30 more days in the rulemaking period. What do you expect to jump out between now and then? Uh, just more of what has been happening, trying to define and clarify what the FDIC will be doing. Okay. You know, just in the time we have remaining, uh, how are things going in the Lehman Brothers case? I see there are two plans out there that might be coming to a vote, one from the debtor, one from Goldman Sachs. Uh, are we going to see this case wind up anytime soon? Well, uh, there, there's actually more than two now. There's the debtor's plan. There's a plan by a group of ad hoc, uh, they call themselves the ad hoc group. And I guess I haven't seen it, the uh, Goldman Sachs or the uh, Alliance plan that may have been filed. Uh, the case is in what I would call its final phase. Which plan will get confirmed? I hope it's going to be the debtor's plan. All right. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. Harvey, always good to see you. Thanks so good much for coming you. in today. Thank you for, for the invitation. All right. That's Harvey Miller. He is a partner at the law firm Wild Gottschall & Mangies. If you'd like to learn more about the issues we just discussed, go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.